for this new animal. Are you excited? No, what is it? I can't tell you, it's a surprise. No, you know what? I'm sick of these surprises. It's bullshit. is <laughs> what it is. Get that camera on here. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. It is a balmy 12 degrees here in Michigan. And you know what, guys? I used to hate winter. And in Michigan, winter lasts a long time. And you know, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to be happy. And I'm just going to go ahead and embrace the insanity. So I tell you what guys, let's go ahead and just push our props aside and have an amazing day together. I hope that your day is absolutely incredible. So for the next 12 or 15 minutes, let's just have a good time. Let's head over to the shop and get this day started. Woo! Lori, I am super excited. Guess what? I've got a good animal I'm gonna get next week. And I'm excited. What are you gonna get? I can't tell you yet. It's gonna be a surprise. But the good news is, is guess what? We're just trading geckos for it. So that's right, we're gonna send out a hundred geckos for this new animal. Are you excited? No, what is it? I can't tell you, it's a surprise. No, you know what? I'm sick of these surprises. It's bullshit is what it is. <laughs> no, 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 this is a good one. You're gonna love this one. Yeah, it I doubt so it. Cute. Is it a puppy? Is it a puppy? It's kind of like a puppy. No. Number one, I don't even want a puppy because this is not the time or place. No, you're going to like this one. No, I'm not. No, this is so cute. I guarantee cute. I'm not because I don't it want so anything cute. else right now. It's so cute and we're not paying for it. It's a treat. We're getting rid of geckos. I don't care. It's still, oh, you know what? I swear to God. It's going to be good. Get that camera out of here because I'm going to punch you. <laughs> it's going to be good, Lori. I cannot wait. To, she's so excited. I'm happy she's excited about this. It's going to be such a big surprise. <laughs> Break it up. You know, the other day I had Daisy with me out in Chicago with David Dobrik and we went around and we introduced people to cool animals and had a really great time with doing it. And Daisy is such an amazing ambassador. I mean, she really changes so many people's minds. I mean, people that are a little bit freaked out by snakes always, after we introduce her to Daisy, you know, they want pictures, they pet her. I mean, she's just an amazing animal. And you know, guys, you don't have to agree with my techniques on things. I realize some people people say, why would you hook up with guys like David Dobrik or Logan Paul? Because maybe you don't agree with that technique. But the truth is, you don't have to agree with what I do, but you should definitely have to agree with the results. I mean, we reach millions of people with a tolerance message and a love of reptiles message. And it's working, people. I mean, we are close to a million subscribers and a hundred million views this year. Again, not everything I do is perfect. I make mistakes. Sometimes I cross the line, but I'm doing it because I believe in the message I'm trying to to preach. And I'm not gonna lie, it sucks when I see horrible things written about how terrible a person I am, or when people say I don't take care of my animals. You know, come on, people. Don't listen to the bull crap that you read on the internet. You know, people will say like, oh, my employees hate it here, or I'm a terrible boss and I treat people horribly. Well, ask my employees. Follow them on Instagram and ask them because they're amazing people and we have a great relationship and I treat them the best I possibly can and I never do anything that wouldn't be be good for the animals. If my crew comes to me and says, Brian, I need something, I never say, oh, we can't afford it. I say, let's go ahead and get it. If it's gonna make the animals healthy, we're gonna do it. So my point is, is that I'm just trying to reach people with the message of love and tolerance and also to inspire you and create curiosity. So listen, in the end, you don't have to love what I do, but please, you know, be a little bit tolerant of what I'm doing because it does hurt my feelings when I hear all the negative. Because of course, I'm a person and I have feelings. It hurts your feelings when you see horrible things about you, especially when they're not true. Regardless, Daisy is amazing and I hope you guys love her as much as I love her. Let's go ahead and check in with Jessica because it's kind of exciting news today. Uh, Jessica, so what do we have? We have some little blazing blizzards oh my gosh, that hatched out yesterday. Look at these little guys here. Little Christmas oh my gosh. babies. It's crazy that we're still hatching geckos. I mean, do we have many left? Nope, actually, it's just those two eggs Just right those there. two eggs. So you can see we have what looks like a little hypotangerine, a normal, and then there are two eggs left. So so think about that. We we started hatching, I don't know, gosh, it seems like five or six months oh ago. It it's been a lot. July yes. we started hatching. Okay, yeah, so like five months ago we started hatching and we're down to our last two eggs in leopard geckos. The geckos are in hibernation 
vacation now, so how's that feeling for you? Uh, I'm still super busy. It doesn't feel like I have any less work, to be honest. <laughs> the good news is, I mentioned earlier, we're going to be sending out 100 geckos for a trade on an animal. By the way, go down in the comments and let me know what animal you think I'm going to get, which would be the value of 100 normal geckos. Uh, let's see if you have it right. I, I'm pretty stoked about this. It's going to be about a week because the weather is really cold here, So, uh, but then you have to start working on skinks pretty soon. Yep, this week. Yeah, at least Jessica's pretty excited about the skinks because it's a change of pace. We still have a couple months of uh, you getting a little bit calm. Uh, a little bit, but with skinks I'll be, you know, busy as always. <laughs> that's true. I'm, I'm excited though. It's always yeah. nice working with something new. And yeah, <laughs> and skinks are kind of uh, painstakingly tedious because you've got to literally put them together and then watch them and just wait and wait. And sometimes males are breeding like five minutes and sometimes you have to sit there and watch them for like 15 minutes and you can't let them go because they can kill each other. Pretty got some work cut out for me. <laughs> <laughs> but with any luck, uh, Jessica will kill it this year with skinks. Last year was my fault. I cycled them wrong. So this year I am confident we're going to have a ton of little skinks here in another few months. So uh, it's Hopefully awesome. Hopefully we have skinks in about six months. I babies. Know. I know. They're so <laughs> cute. So, all right, cool. So how cool is that? The last gecko. we got two more eggs. I'll update you guys when they hatch. What in the freaking world is this? What's going on here? Well, I mean, it's negative two outside. you got to stay warm, especially when you're wearing shorts. Look at that. Oh my God. A little leg. And there goes, look at that. Are those camo shorts too? Oh my yeah, gosh. Look at this guy. Camo. That's it's my favorite color. <laughs> Mary, what do you think of this? It's just Eric. <laughs> okay, so we've been in this building for a couple years, and the one thing that I always seem to do is clutter things up with a bunch of animals and a bunch of different things. When we moved in here, there was no animals up front whatsoever. It was just offices. We we're going to keep everything in back, and then slowly I started adding Fetty Wap, and then I added Bella, Snoop Frog, and then Karma, and now, of course, we have Guacamole. So things are just really muddled here, but the good news is, is that we are going to be moving almost all of these animals next door as we build that out and the build hopefully will start sometime in the middle to the end of January so I'm super excited about that but for now we need to make space so it's not so unbelievably cluttered for instance uh, guacamole here is still on our break table. So Lori went out and bought some pans that are really good because what happens is when you have the mist system on, uh, these misters right here, of course all this water, because it's screened, falls down here. And if you don't have like a drip pan, uh, like this white thing that we have here, it gets all over the place. And of course this one is just a, a spare cage from downstairs. So Lori bought some better drip pans. We're gonna go ahead and put Karma and Guacamole right next to each other. But of course you've gotta have a border between them. Right now we might just do cardboard. Eventually we'll get like a piece of plastic that they can't see through because of course karma and guacamole see each other they're gonna get upset so just something you got to keep in mind but we're gonna just organize this a little bit better so things aren't quite as cluttered out here and slowly over the next month we'll get things a little better up here in the offices So at least we have the chameleons kind of out of the way. We have our break table back. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do up here, but this is gonna work out really well. Again, Laura got these little plastic things that are like drip pans here that are gonna be awesome for the sprayer, which is really good. Uh, again, I'm gonna put a little barrier up here so Karma doesn't see guacamole so they don't freak out. Uh, I still have to hook up the lights and then I have to get a timer on the mister uh, and then put a mister over onto guacamole's cage and then we're all set. At least for now, this will work. Uh, oh, and I've got to figure out how to turn the microwave on so that everyone can use the microwave. Yes, you do, because I use this every day for lunch. So this needs to get figured out. Guess that's a, I didn't think that far, but that, we'll figure it out. Getting there. Kelsey, we are almost ready to start breeding pythons, right? Yes, I'm very excited. We are behind schedule and it's my fault 100% because Kelsey helps me with the breeding scheme, but I always make kind of final touches to it and so like that. I've been so busy that I haven't got the final touches. So Kelsey every day is like, Brian, did you get that list? Did you get that list? Did you get that list? So we are getting close. Sorry, Kelsey, but I promise it's going to be a good one. Hope so. It better be. You made me wait this long. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, and on a different note, I actually wanted to tell you that uh, I talked to my friend Ben and he actually had talked with a couple anaconda breeders okay. and they had said that Verde uh, will absolutely eat if we try smelt. I know we've tried tuna, we've tried sardines, but he says smelt. Oh, yeah. Smelt, smelt is it. huh? Smelt is it. Smelt are pretty stinky, so I mean, if that's what works. Well, that's what he says. He says he guarantees me if I try smelt scented rodents, it will absolutely eat. So I'm gonna go get smelt 
either later today or tomorrow. That's Absolutely worth a try. All right, cool. So, all right, and I'm going to do a vlog in the next couple days that kind of explains our cycle for pythons, like what we do. I've done them in the past on Snake Bites TV, but for you guys that are interested in breeding snakes, we'll go through and kind of give you the whole cycle down. That will be in the next couple days, so stay tuned. I'll do a complete breakdown of how to breed pythons from temperatures to cycling food to humidity to when you put males in, when you don't put males in, all that stuff. Because every year when you start to breed stuff, it's always like, oh my God, maybe I'm going to have every female produce. But the fact is, is that the realistic thing is that you're not going to have every female you breed produce. So you got to keep your expectations in the right way for sure. But I'll kind of give you the roadmap because there's some beautiful animals. We cannot wait. We have some new males that are going to be up to size this year. So we'll be able to breed those guys to some other females. Things like this blue-eyed leucistic. I mean, there's just such amazing animals. And again, every year you just get excited about the potential. And I can't wait to bring you guys along on really the first full breeding season from start to finish. When when it comes to vlogging. Yeah, I was vlogging last year during this time, but I wasn't covering things the same way. So this year, I'm really excited to kind of take you on this journey from start to finish. All right guys, so I am back at the house and there's this kind of famous picture that uh, there's a baby ball python on top of like a stack of donuts. And we thought for Noah's vlog, why don't we make some big donuts big. And, <laughs> and put an adult ball python on the top of it. What do you think, Lori? What does that even mean? <laughs> Why is she not supportive of this decision? So we have all of our ingredients here that we need to make it. Yep. And are they all the same flavor? No, uh, we'll add different frost. Different frosting? On top. And by the way, we're making three big donuts. You can actually bake them like a cake. And then we're gonna put a adult ball pipeline on the top. Uh, and what did you say each donut serves? 16. So, so we'll have enough for like 48 people. <laughs> so we're gonna have enough donuts for 48 people and there's three of us so we have our work cut out for us eating these donuts so we're gonna do some bacon tonight but it's gonna be tomorrow that we're gonna film Noah's vlog and the next day I will put a link in the description to Noah's video on this uh, amazing thing plus I will post a picture of these donuts with the ball python on top on Instagram at snake bites TV all right so Noah what do you want to do we're <laughs> you put them on top like this and then you put them in the oven right that is not how that works no. No, that is not. Yeah, exactly. But wait, but they're supposed to be batter that defies gravity and stays upside down in this one? No. <laughs> so it's a good thing we have Lori because we were planning on putting the batter in these and then putting them like this <laughs> and cooking them. And yeah. she brought up a good point. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. So what do you do? You cook them separate and then once they're you done. Put, you put it together to make Good they come after, after the cake comes out. Why didn't you? Were, why weren't you here for the eggnog? Oh, yeah. There's a million reasons why I wasn't here for the eggnog. <laughs> So we have all the ingredients mixed up and this is literally a cake mix from scratch that Noah came up with yep. uh, with no help from Lori. I invented it. All it takes is just a little bit of experience. <laughs> okay, so they're going in the oven. There you go. 350 degrees for how long? For three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. This is just like a turkey. You cook it for low and slow for three and a half hours for this cake. And see you on the other side. <laughs> so, so guys, uh, Noah actually has two more of these after this one is done. Uh, you got to work hard to have something really cool. So hopefully we will not only have some really good donuts, but we'll hopefully have a really cool picture of a ball python sitting on top of these very large donuts. So again, we're going to finish this up tomorrow, and then the next day Noah's vlog will be out with this, and we'll have some cool pictures on Instagram. So let's see how this turns out. All right, guys, so I am going to go ahead and end the vlog here and spend the rest of the evening with my family. I hope that you guys have an absolutely amazing day, evening, morning, whatever you happen to be watching. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You guys mean the world to me and I love you so much. Can you do me a favor? Can you smash that like button as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video? Just every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.